is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to Sean in Canada. Hey, Sean, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how's it going, brother? It's going great, man. How you doing? I'm a huge fan of the show. I just found out about you guys within the last uh, month and a half. Okay. And I can't believe I'm like, where did these guys come from? How did you find out about us? Sometimes I'll go and I'll go in the search engine and try to find some market analysis. Okay, man. <laughs> Welcome to the Tiger family. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us, man. Yeah, man. I really appreciate you guys, and I'm just excited to watch your bid. I get a lot out of them. I really love the intros you do and the experience and the energy, and you guys are pretty special. Well, we get a great network, man, and there's a lot of diversity, man, and we're really lucky. Thank you so much for calling, man. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Sean. Have a great one. Have a safe Thanks. one. Thank you, too, bud. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Don't make assumptions. Be yourself around others. The biggest assumption that humans make is that everyone sees life the way we do. We assume that others think the way we think feel the way we feel, judge the way we judge, and abuse the way we abuse. We are afraid to be our ourselves around others because we think others will judge us, victimize us, abuse us, and blame us as we do ourselves. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 82, NASDAQ up 36, S&P's up 10, gold contract flat 12.6870, silver down nine cents, $16.85, platinum, down 16 bucks at 9.27 an ounce. Copper down two pennies at 2.59 a pound. Light sweet crude up 34 cents, trading 46 dollars, 42 cents a barrel. Notes: 10-year note flat 126.18. 30-year bond up one tick 155.10. King dollar down 151 ticks 96.970. The euro is trading at 112 to the U.S. dollar. The yen is at 110 flat to the U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Okay, so you get the Fed beginning a two-day meeting today. We have the announcement at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. You just had uh, Jeff Sessions. He just started his testimony in front of the Senate. Bottom line, folks, we're going to have some volatility out here uh, between... There's hearings and between the Fed. Uh, the bond market and the dollar are saying that, guess what? The Fed, I expect, yeah, short-term rates are going to go up. Bottom line, though, it's not going to be aggressive because bonds want higher price, dollar wants lower price, gold and silver save themselves, they're going higher. We'll get into all of that. S&Ps, what do we got the S&Ps? So right now, your SPY is trading at 244.35. Uh, we've got 38 million shares, and uh, this is the number you want to keep your eye on. It's, uh, that was the high, the first high that was generated on um, the 2nd of May. So if we close above 244.35, that said the high, the high can be tested, which is that 245.01. Dow Industrials, the Dow Industrials reached a new high out here today. Uh, it's at a new high right now. It's up 82 bucks. You're at 21,318. The composite, NDX100 and the composite, you get a bounce on light volume. This is anemic. More than likely, what you're going to see here is you're going to see a very large ABC structure on the way down. Your A point up there is all the way to the top, 63.41. Your B is at 61.10, so it's a big one. Uh, we take That's in the composite as well as in the NDX100. Uh, NDX100 is up 37 bucks right now at 57.45. If we take the Qs and you take a look at the Qs, what you're going to see is that we... Came off the high of 143.90. You come off the high with 109 million shares and 104, and you're up 141. Bottom line, that's a classic counter trend bounce, light volume, all of the above. Uh, this market wants lower price. Gold contract. What do we have with the gold contract? Gold contract had to save itself out here today, and it did. Uh, bottom line, you got to 1260.50. We're 1268.60. 
you came into the strength. We did it with light of volume. We have, uh, we were coming into 272,000 contracts. That lower point was 1261.30. You got to 1260.50, rejected it. Inside the range now, bottom line, and coming into the Fed statement tomorrow, it's gonna be wild, folks. Bottom line, though, this one's higher price. That's how, that's how it's shaken out. Uh, when we went up last week on the 6th, you pushed into that swing point with big volume. We hit 1298.80. It's going after the 1300.30. And the way this traded now, now you can get up and over that big time, too. The reason being is that now you can, we can speculate that is the A point on this 12.17 and the B up there at 12.98. We'll, we'll find out when we're going after uh, the C point, which is the high right now, which is the last high. Silver, what do we have with the silver market? Silver market uh, is, is helping itself, saving itself. <laughs> That's for sure. Silver, silver got down to $16.78. Right now you're at $16.94. Still big volume on silver. And now this, this contract's rolling, but the bottom line is get big volume. I want to see silver get back inside 1720. 1720, folks, is where silver took out the B point of an ABC structure on the way up. So what you had now, this is a complex ABC up now. Uh, the, your first price projection was the 1872. That'll be a lower price projection now because we went lower. Uh, we'll, we'll get that price projection for you, but it looks like silver is also going to go right after the swing point again, which is $17.82. Notes and bonds and the dollar, just this steady. Bottom line, you had the note market come down to 126.06 today. We've done 812,000 contracts. That's anemic volume, rejection of price. You were rejecting... 1 million contracts as, one, as well as 1.5 million. The lowest swing point of the strength is 126.04. We didn't make it, which is just awesome. It just shows how bullish it is. It's 126.06. So this also wants higher price, lower yield. Right now, the 10-year is yielding 2.206. 30-year, same type of setup inside the 30-year. 30-year uh, got down to 153.18 today. You're at 154.01. You've done volume out here of 189,000 contracts, and you're going into 323,000. And good old King Dollar. What do we have with King Dollar? King Dollar looks like it's just getting ready to just rip apart this bottom. So King Dollar is down today on 20,000 contracts. You're at 96,980. The 97,275 mark just can't handle it. This is building cause to get into the 95 area. Uh, depending on how we hit that 95 area, if that takes that 95 area apart, which it could be because we've been building cause for a couple weeks right now. Uh, the, that's the shorter term. Longer term, this King Dollar wants to go to 91. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials right now up 84, NASDAQ's up 37, S&Ps are up 10. Be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. The uh, Dow right now is up 84. You get the Nasdaq up 37. S&Ps are up 10. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the first hour. Uh, Basil's got a great program right here on TFNN, folks. Every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter. It's called The Opening Call. Now, the way you can test drive this for 30 days, you come over to our website at TFNN, go to Newsletters, You'll see the opening call, test drive at 30 days, absolutely free. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Very well, thank you. I heard you had a little heat wave up there. Uh, this is, yeah. We've had a, a heat wave in the 90s. Is it still in the 90s? Yep, it still is. Wow. Very humid as well. Oh, boy. We better, yeah. better visit Florida. Look, see, I got a sweatshirt on in here, folks, okay? I'm just looking. What, what, is, <laughs> what the, is this? What happens in our building, folks, is crazy, okay? We're in Florida, and what happens is that we supposedly have a Class A building, but it gets so cold in here sometimes. I just walked in the studio, and it's like 60 degrees. It's like, yeah. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, what, what, what kind of a stock do we have going with this Dow Industrials, man? Yeah, well, let's get to the Dow in a moment. Well, okay. Remember, when we spoke last Thursday, what I said is for subscribers, because the Nasdaq had gone to new highs, and I wasn't sure whether the Dow would follow or whether the Dow would drag the Nasdaq low when the Nasdaq finally made its high. I said, well, I've got to wait. When the, What happened was the Nasdaq went to new highs, the NDX 100, that's the QQQ series, and that was followed very quickly uh, with the S&P. Once that happened, I said, uh-oh, now this is something very different. Now we're going to look at a rotation and this market has just been a constant rotation from the moment it started the first uh, correction in the lowest in March 19, uh, 2009. And then that summer started the first real correction where we saw there was a rotation where sectors that had done well took a bit of a breather and others uh, went higher. So what we did is we went into the IWM, the Russell 2000, anticipating that the Qs had made their highs, the S&P had made an all-time high. The, uh, on the same day, the Dow and the New York Stock Exchange made new highs. And I was really looking at monthly charts. And the monthly charts said that the IWM was only at a peak C. Let me just explain this real quickly. In the Chapman Wave methodology, one of the things we look for is to identify the lowest low bar and then merely count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them, uppercase A, B, C, D. Yes. Fourth highest peak where other things can happen. Can go higher. 
but D is really the objective. So I said, okay, we're going to go, but we aren't going to just go long. We went 300% long, I think it was a Wednesday. Then there's been a fabulous move. It went to an all-time high, the iShares, uh, the Russell 2000 ETF, the IWM. And now it's in leg D. It's in leg E in the weekly chart, and it made a peak D at 142.90. So on Friday, when the the T and A, which is the three three times direction shares long that we've got, went to a new high. We took off half the position, so we still half have half of the position of the 300% long, and it's trading at one. At, uh, it's trading higher. So, I tomorrow is going to be quite a critical day, and I'll explain what, what I'm looking at. It just happens to be the Fed um, Fed statement day. You and I have been talking about this, and it seems like the Fed, all the all the criteria that the Fed is looking for, I believe, is being met. So I don't see any yes. reason why they aren't going to raise rates. But we've been looking at rates coming down. So what I wanted to show you is we've actually been long the TLT for about uh, two weeks or so. And uh, what's interesting is it went to a peak E in the Chapman wave at 125.87. This is the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund. And now it's pulled back, but it's holding the 200-period moving average. So um, in my show, and I'll do it again tomorrow in my uh, Tiger Technician show at 11 o'clock, I'm, I'm going to discuss how the uh, the different yields, the weekly yields, the 30-year, this is the 30-year, the white chart that I'm showing with a black background. Okay. The 10-year yield is right here, the brown, and the five-year is the cyan-colored one. It's been, they've been in a trading band, and it's been making lower lows and lower highs. And it says that it's real clear that if, with tomorrow... I'm not sure what this, the, the Fed is going to do to actually push rates much higher. I think they're going to bump it up, and then the natural attrition is going to occur because I don't think all the areas that they're looking at, yeah, maybe wages and stuff, but in, within the economy, the, rate, the way we've looked at the rotation through the different sectors, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they just do this once and then they talk about holding off before they do the next bump up. So it seems to me that it's going to be very important, but... You know, I spoke about the Japanization of our bond yields yeah. going lower and lower. That's just been happening. And I, well, I was very impressed. The chart I'm going to show you next is the HGX, which is the Philadelphia housing sector. It just broke out. It's in a leg F to the upside, but this is now a new recovery high. And even wood, which is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, has just broken out. So I... I'm not sure just how, how much of an impact it's going to be. So I always, always say that markets don't necessarily change. I'm going to go to the Dow for a moment here. The markets don't necessarily change when there's something very important like a Fed meeting. Once in a while, I remember that that, that made the change, except we are in a leg F in the Dow daily. The S&P failed by, um, it's gone to a C, at 2446.20 uh, on the 9th, it needs the D. I think it's going to, I'm thinking just squeeze to the D and then we've got to be a bit careful. So when we looked, at, I, I spoke to you last week and I said the three, the three sectors that have been leading the trio that's led us on the way up, the QQQ, the semiconductors and the XLK, which is the, high, the, the tech sector, S&P tech yes. select area. Everything about it said that they're very close to a top. And then, of course, on Friday, we had that huge reversal. I suspect that they are not going to make new highs in this particular phase, that there's going to be a rotation. And that's really what we're going to be looking at. So we went along the uh, we've got a position in the XLF, which is the bank index. Okay. We'll see tomorrow whether that's going to be impacted at all. And I, we're looking for areas that are not in that very overbought semiconductor in, in the high tech and and the leadership, I think, is going to take a pause and we're going to see a rotation. And that's going to be very important. So um, there, there's certain areas we're looking at. How how does tomorrow's action affect some of the dividend stocks? There's a mixed picture there. Jane j is up at the top. And Procter and Gamble is in the lows. So it's a real mixed picture. So I think stock selection is going to be very important. And I'm just wondering, because the IWM does have quite a number of the financials in them, whether the IWM actually holds a lot better than, say, the Dow or the S&P if there is a pullback. So this is a very important moment. Happens to coincide with the Fed meeting. As I said, I don't usually look at 
news events like this changing the, the trend. Usually the trend you might have a day or two that changes, but then the trend stays in place. So I'm just making it real clear for my for my subscribers. Uh, for instance, the Dow, if the Dow by Monday, give it a few days. If the Dow takes out, it's at 21,323 right now, just off the all-time high. If the Dow closes below 21,000, 21, <laughs> you've got to get used to saying these numbers. I know. 20, 21,100 <laughs> 21, goes back to the 20,000s. Then I think we start to see the digestive phase. But I'm looking at first to see it as a digestion phase. But I think that the some of the, the areas like the semiconductors, Somewhat vulnerable. They had the first uh, cr shot across the bow on Friday. I, I think I have a tough time making new highs. Folks, come over to our website at TFNN. Go to newsletters. You'll see the opening call. You can test drive it 30 days absolutely free. And you know it's interesting, Basil? There's no doubt. That home building index breaking out. That's saying the Fed, I mean, rates are going to be low. Yeah. I think so. That's yeah. why I'm looking at it. Okay, yes. have a great one. Have a safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow, Basil. Thank you, Tom. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. We have the Dow Industrials up 94, NASDAQ's up 46, S&Ps are up by 12. Let's go take a look at the uh, S&Ps for us. They're definitely catching a bit here. So, uh, let's see. Okay, so we're at highs for today, 24.39. I'm 
bring this. Now the high is 24.43, so this is pretty wild. Uh, and this thing came into this, uh, let me get this a little bit closer so I can see this volume in this 10 minute bar. So we just came into, okay, so the, the swing point at, uh, at two o'clock had 21,000 contracts traded and we are, we got plenty of time. Well, actually, no, that's interesting. So we commit to it 16,000 contracts. So, okay, this is gonna be the number to keep your eye on now. The number is, uh, it's 2438.50. Because what we just did there, um, we got into it, but you get into it with uh, 5,000 less contracts. That's a big number, folks, meaning that um, it couldn't overtake it with that number. So we'll see where this shakes out coming into the close, but I. I do expect the volatility is going to uh, continue out here. Let's go inside the NDX 100. We'll see the strength versus the weakness. Strength out here today, Tesla. Tesla's up 4.4%. You get uh, WorldCom, uh, WorldCom. Uh, Western Digital up 3.8%. Uh, Wynn Casinos is up 3%. Norwegian Cruise Lines up 2.9%. Taken away from it, Mylan Pharmaceutical down 2.6%. You get Fox, 21st uh, Century Fox, uh, down 2.2%, and net tease is off 1.3%. Uh, we get over and we take a look at that dollar as we come in to the uh, close with uh, 30 minutes left. You are at right now, yeah, this thing's just stagnant, uh, 96.98. And if you do take a look at this and we put this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, folks, on that continuous contract, what you're going to see, what, what is glaring out here, um, is the, the election night, 95.905. We've actually been building cars down here for, for three weeks. This is the fourth week, actually. So this is going to get pretty intense at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon when this uh, rate, well, when the statement comes out from the Fed. Because the way that the dollar is right now, the way the dollar is trading, your probability is much higher that you're going to go to 95 down to 94. And the bottom of this consolidation, which goes back from March 2015, is 91. You know, you break, you, you break that consolidation and uh, the dollar would really be in tough shape. Let's go take a look at uh, Tesla's. And so Tesla is up $16 at $375. At highs, <laughs> look at this, this is crazy. So 376.87 was the high. We hit 375.75 today. And Tesla right now has, this stays pretty consistent. One out of every four shares a shot. 24.15% of the shares a shot. Um, that is huge support, folks, for Tesla on a continual basis. There's no two ways about that. Uh, we go look at the um, composite, and so the composite right now is up $46, and that baby, we had a low out there yesterday of uh, 61.10, you're at 62.22. Real question is, yeah, so this will be interesting watching this close out too. So. When we take a look at the composite, folks, the number to keep your eye on at this close here is going to be right where we are, because that's ice. Okay, so watch what we did. Two days ago on Friday, rather, yeah, Friday. Friday, you went from 63.40 straight down into the uh, abyss of 61.74. That being said, the flush down, which would be ice, after it, you know, kept going down, 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 then all of a sudden at 2.30, it went from 62.21, and by 2.40, we were at 61.43. So you can see what, what happened there. We go down, yeah, we're down 65 points inside the composite. So that number right there, the high of that, is ice. And that would be 62.21.15. And that's right where we are. We'll see whether I can hold that coming into the close. Because if you hold that, that's saying, guess what? The bottom line, you can, you can you get a bounce higher. You don't hold that coming into the close today, that would be saying that you're not going to bounce higher. Uh, if we do go uh, over to that, uh, what was intriguing when, um, when Basil uh, HGX, when he actually did bring up that housing index, um, 
This is the Philadelphia Housing uh, Index. This is, this is, <laughs> there's no doubt, this is not only, um, it went topside, but it's getting away from the whole bottom of this consolidation that, that it was in. So there's another indication that um, the interest rates are not going to be going up as aggressively um, as, well, it's not going to be going up aggressively, period. Not, some people may think they're going up they are, or may not. Bottom line is that the way that the bonds are trading out here, the way that the housing index is trading, it's saying that short-term rates or even long-term rates are going to stay low. The Fed can control short-term rates. It's the only thing they can control. What has normally happened, however, that being said, is that when a bank-to-bank -bank rate goes up, 25 basis points, immediately they put rates up. Um, what has happened is that because there's so much buying inside the note and the bond market, there's more demand than there are bonds right now. That's what's also going on. So picture what also happens here, folks. This is how this shakes out. And this is what's intriguing about where we are in the cycle of debt and bonds. So if this was 10, 12 years ago, you know, our debt's going through, through the moon, right, on a continual basis, up, up, up. Well, what has happened the last few years Yes, we're borrowing more money, but our debt structure is actually going down because of the fact that so much money has been made, number one, that money gets structured into the government. Government doesn't need as much money to run. And this year, they're sending out less bonds than they did last year. So picture this. You have all these bonds that are expiring, all these, all these you know, large institutions, insurance companies, countries, huge funds have bonds that are expiring. What ends up happening? They get an expired bond, they got to buy another bond, right? They don't have to, but that's what they want to do. Well, guess what? When the Treasury is not pushing out more bonds, they're pushing out less bonds, what does that do? That takes the structure that there's more demand than there is supply. And then when you take that on top of the aspect of world rates, our world rates, we are still high in the, in the context of world rates. So funny money, I think we've all got used to it. Bottom line is that uh, low rates are going to be out here. So 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, we'll see where this shakes out. Dow Industrials up 87, NASDAQ up uh, 47, S&Ps are up 11, gold is flat, 1268.80. We're going to be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. 
While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over and take a look at the GDX. The um, So, uh, the GDX out here, folks, uh, this is the Van Eck uh, Gold Miners uh, Index. So this baby uh, right now is up 25 cents. Uh, what we have out here is this, and this is where it's, it's always wild when you get to the bottom of a swing point, like it's gonna make it or break it. So when we go back a week ago Friday, we had a huge sign of strength, June 6th. You go from a price point on Thursday, we had closed at uh, $22.74 Friday, you go to 23.86 with volume, wide price spread, everything really looking good. Uh, gets into the swing from the 17th of May, much higher volume. That was uh, 97 million shares versus a swing of 67. Then what happens? Guess what? Pull back, man. Now you pull back and you did it with light volume, and that's. But bottom line, it couldn't hold price, right? You pull back. What do we do? We go right down almost get to the day before we, we take off topside. Well, it saved itself. When I say saved itself, uh, because what does happen here, of course, is that, um, you know, you came down with light volume, but it's like when you can't hold price, you can't hold price. You can go to lower price. Uh, that texture didn't happen. It takes off. Volume's not bad. Because what you actually have here, you have a lower low, and that's why you want light volume. This is where this gets really wild because that's exactly what a bull would want. I didn't want this down. I don't want big volume today. I wanted it to come into this area, which it did. 28 million shares versus 97. Now what will end up happening with the GDX is that it always throws, a, it's a, they'll throw a good five, 10 million shares in at the end. Uh, but now with, with his game again, particularly going into the statement at two o'clock tomorrow, is the swing point of his game again at 23.86. It's not only game, because the way that that has gone up with strength, that is saying that this thing actually wants to run up to this 2488. And the way that the, uh, let's go over to the XAU and the X HUI, because what had happened also is that the XAU and the HUI, they, they also backed down, dramatically lighter volume, saved themselves today. You know, the XAU got to 82.79. It's at 84. 17, I'd love to see it close at 84.22, because 84.22 gets it into the bar of the strength again. If we go look at the gold bugs index, it 
What you have with the Gold Bugs Index, same type of setup. Uh, Gold Bugs Index got down to 193.13. Right now you're at 195.65. And what's going to be intriguing here is this. So picture the way that the metals market, the, the dollar, bonds move, and just markets in general, is that Let's pull up these Fed meetings. So when you're coming up to a Fed meeting and you're coming into it, the, the expectation, I would say, in the whole marketplace is the expectation is that the Federal Reserve going to go up on short-term rates 25 basis points or one quarter point. When they do that, then the bank-to-bank -bank rate will be 0.75 to 1. That's how this thing's going to be shaken out. That's what it looks like, okay? So that being said, the market... And this is why it's intriguing about how gold is moving right now, the bonds are moving in the dollar, is that the, the market is looking at that and said, okay, we're going to be at June 14 tomorrow. The next meeting is July 26. They don't expect anything to happen there. Now, this is where there's no meeting in August. So the market is looking at, that's why I'm kind of looking at the gold market right now. The market is looking at, okay, we cleared this area, meaning... This rate hike, it looks like gold, the dollar, bonds have cleared it, meaning that the aggressiveness wasn't there inside the Fed. And we're going to find out on that statement, but that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And then the market is looking and saying, okay, the next time we have to worry about this is coming up to September 20th. So what ends up happening, of course, you know, you get another 60 something days. And the market will start worrying about it again. But the bottom line is that when you get a breather like that, that's a big breather. And then, of course, what's going to happen is that the, what the market has also been speculating is that they've been speculating that the Fed will come out with some kind of guidance on their balance sheet as to how they're going to reduce their balance sheet. What's going to be intriguing there uh, is do they come out with something or do they just ignore it? You know, so the balance sheet question is going to be like this, folks. The, the balance sheet right now, the Fed continues to buy notes, treasuries, bonds for the amount of notes, treasuries and bonds that are expiring. So when they expire, they put the money back in the marketplace. When they decide that they're going to bring that balance sheet down, what will end up happening, I suspect the first part of that will be that they will, will not reinvest the expiration of those bonds. That'll be the first part. And that would be just like raising short-term rates, because what that would do is that, excuse me, when I talked a little bit earlier about the supply versus the demand, right now there's more demand for bonds than there is supply. So what ends up happening, as soon as they do that, what does that do? That lets off the demand because the Fed is definitely one of the biggest buyers out there. Um, you know, and the, 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 one of the wild cards out here are going to be, it's not just our Fed uh, that is one of the largest buyers out there. It's all the Federal Reserve Banks across the world. They love our bonds. That's the bottom line. So we'll see how that uh, baby uh, does shake out. Some of the higher volume stocks out here in this marketplace as we come into the close. Let's see what we got here. And it will be a low volume day out here. You get Yahoo down 28 cents. You get uh, Nvidia up a buck 69. Uh, Chesapeake Energy's up 21 cents. You got uh, Wells Fargo up 39. If we do go over and we take a look at the XLF, uh, the XLF is coming right into ICE. ICE on the XLF is uh, 24.38. You know, we're closed at 24.45. Well, we're at 24.45. Uh, that's where we came down with 192 million shares. You're doing 83 out here today. Um, you know, if you close over the 24.38, yeah, it can go up to the next level, 24.76. Uh, Goldman, we take a look at Goldman Sachs. Goldman, no doubt, rang the bell at 2.55. Um, Goldman, this is still on an ABC structure on the way down. Uh, Goldman is also projecting that short-term rates, are bought, well, rates in general, uh, are going to stay low. This is, uh, this is a sell right here. You know, Goldman, it's a, it's a consolidation. It's a confirmed ABC structure down to 202. Last time down, we hit 209. Bottom line, you, 
get up here, you get a failure on price and a failure on volume here. And you can see in Goldman's case, there's a, there's a seller that's just laying at like 225, 227. I mean, and it's vicious. Um, this thing has been in its consolidation now since March 27th. Uh, let's take a look at JP Morgan. So JP Morgan out here, same setup. Interesting, yeah, JP Morgan, same setup. That's coming right into the downdraft of March 21st. 8706, and we're at 8729. You stay right there, folks, you'll be coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow Industrials are up 86, NASDAQ's up 45, S&P's are up 11 and a half. We're gonna be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is up 76. You get the NASDAQ up 39. S&Ps are up uh, 10. And, folks, if you'd like to try uh, a test drive one of my newsletters, you can come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters. If you'd like to test drive the gold report, uh, you can do that 30 days absolutely free. You can also test drive Market Insights, which is my daily two weeks absolutely free. So let's go take a look at uh, the indice volume out here today. So we have... Thus far, oh, this is beautiful. Uh, so in the uh, NYSE, folks, you're at 560. That's saying that's going to come in at about 780, maybe 800. Uh, and that is anemic. That's, that's pretty cool, though. And, be, and the reason I'm saying that's pretty cool, because, because of the fact that uh, how we got to a new high after uh, we had that downdraft. Uh, the composite, the composite right now is uh, trading out uh, at 1.7 billion, 
Uh, that's going to end up with a couple billion. That couple billion, this is what's pretty intense here, that two billion is coming into 3.1 billion. If we take a look at that correlation and do that correlation inside the queues, what you're going to see is that you're down on 109 million, you're up on 45 million. That doesn't fly. That's the bottom line. Uh, the SPY, SPY, you're dealing with uh, your 132 on the way down, 49 on the way up. The SPY is going to get intriguing because we're laying right at the number when I started the program here, which is the 244.35. That's the number to keep your eye on. And these pennies are pretty amazing watching these pennies uh, when you're talking about uh, a trade that you're talking hundreds of dollars, $244.34. It's laying right there. And that, what that number is, folks, that was the high that was established on June 2nd. And we stayed at that high uh, from June 2nd. We spiked that high on Friday, and that's when the market gave it up. So that's, that's why that, that, num that number and that day is actually so important. If we go over, let me go over to the Dow again for a second. Just look at this. Yeah, the Dow, oh, well, actually, oh, this will be interesting. So the Dow, yeah, the Dow would have to come down another 10 points. The Dow would have to get under 21,305. Right now we're 21,310, 315. I mean, it could do it, but bottom line, it looks like the Dow wants to uh, basically mess with this high uh, a bit more because the, the, the characteristic there, that's, it's approximately, let me see this again. So, MVOL. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be about 800 million going into 984. You know, the, and we'll see if, if in fact they put heavier volume into that as we come into the close, the probability would be higher is would be much higher that you go higher. You get lighter volume uh, as we come into the close, the probability goes just the opposite way. Um, if you go take a look at some of the high flying tech stocks, they have nothing behind them. Apple is up a buck at 30 million shares after coming down with 64 million shares. We go take a look at Google. Um, Google uh, up $7 uh, with 1.7 million shares after getting toasted with uh, 3.6. The king of the road out here, uh, Amazon. 4.2 million up 14 bucks versus uh, 7.6 on the way down. You know, you, you certainly can uh, get a little more uh, oomph and a little more bounce, but bottom line is that you're down on volume, you're up in light volume. Uh, what we haven't had yet is that the, those lows haven't been tested yet, so that you'll at least get a test of those lows, and you very well could have ABC structures on the way down. Um, you know, it's very unusual what we got, and it's very hard for that to happen, is that in one day, straight across all the indices, they all reach highs and give it up, and give it up in spades. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back with uh, some numbers for you after the close. Dow Industrials are up 79, NASDAQ's up 39, S&Ps are up 9, gold contract 1268.90. We'll be right back, folks. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN.
The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Nick in Tampa. Hey, Nick, what's going on? Tom O'Brien, it is an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. We appreciate the calling. No problem. Um, dude, I've been listening to your show for about two years now, and it has just been wonderful. I listen to you, Basil, Andy. You guys do an amazing job. Well, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you growling and prowling out here with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Love is kind and just. When you're in love, a smile is always on your face. You feel good about yourself, and because you're happy, you are kind. Love is also just. When you make a mistake, you pay only once for that mistake. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials up 92, NASDAQ up 44, SPs up 11, gold contract flat, trading at, where is she? 1268.90. Silver down 9 cents, $16.84. Both gold and silver saved themselves, folks. Bottom line, they want higher price. We're coming into the Fed meeting tomorrow. Uh, well, you get the Fed meeting today, state, statement tomorrow, 2 o'clock, bottom line, looks like they're going to be less aggressive on rates. Why am I saying that? Because you had the metals save themselves out here today at a swing point. You had bonds reject lower price once again, and you had king dollar just can't hold higher price. Uh, oil. Oil market, that, well, first, copper. Copper was down a penny and a half, trading at 259 a pound. Light sweet crude up 35 cents, $46.43 a barrel. Uh, we're going to get the oil numbers, let's see, uh, yeah, this at 430 today. Uh, 430, we'll get the uh, API, we'll get the EIA numbers tomorrow morning at 1030. Bonds, 10-year note, up one tick, 126.19. 30-year bond, down two ticks, 155.07. Now, both notes and bonds, they did it again. They rejected the lower price. Bottom line, you get the 10-year trading at 2.20. King dollar. What do we have with King dollar? It just can't handle higher price. Down 136 ticks. You're at 96.985. Uh, the King dollar number, folks, goes like this. We've been down for six months. 103 was the high. That was January 3rd. Where, Jan well, we're June 13th. Pretty amazing. Uh, bottom line is this baby's building cars to get down into the 95 area. You break that 95 and we're going to be at 91. 91 is the bottom of the consolidation that we've been in since March of 2015. The euro is trading at 112 to the U.S. dollar. The yen is at 110 flat to the U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? So you closed over the high of the 2nd of June, which is 244.35. That is saying, guess what? Coming into this meeting tomorrow morning, we're going to test that high where we sold down from on Friday inside the S&P. That's where 244.48, that number is only 50 cents higher. It's 245.01. Dow Industrials closed at a new high out here today. Dow Industrials were up 92 bucks. We're at 21,328. Now, different ball game inside the NDX 100 and the NASDAQ composite. What do you have? The composite is up 44 bucks. You're at 62.20. This has got a long way to go. It, it could uh, basically, no doubt, test the 62.67. What, what 62.67 is, those are the lows of the 16th, I mean the 6th and 7th of June. That's where we're at. Um, NDX 100, same type of setup inside the NDX. Uh, NDX is up 43 bucks. You're at 57.51. Now, I don't see the NDX actually getting up to the 58.45 level. The NDX is weak. And if we bring over the Qs and we take a look at this, what you'll see what I'm talking about. So the Qs, this, this baby came down hard, fast, furious, all of the above. We went from 143 uh, down to 137 in a heartbeat. 
you did 50 million shares today. The 50 million going, going into the 109 million uh, Friday and yesterday. Bottom line, if we go over and take a look at a few of these high flyers, you're going to see Apple, bottom line, was up a buck. Big deal. Doesn't mean a thing. Uh, Google, and these are the ones that brought us down so quick, too. Uh, Google is up $8.69. You're trading at $9.70. That's off a high of $1,005. That's, that's a good gain back. You're still $35 off the high. Uh, Amazon, Amazon was up $15 today. That came down off $1,012. That is only $32 off its high right now. You're at $9.80. Microsoft, you take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft is trading, uh, it was up $0.87 cents today. 24 million shares, you're at 70.65, and that high is a 72.89. Facebook, that'll be the last of the FANG stocks there. Uh, what you got with Facebook? Facebook up 220 today, that's down, that's trading 150.68. Uh, that's five, still five bucks off its high. You did volume of 20 million versus 35 on the way down. Bottom line, that both in all of those cases, they want to at least test their high volume swing lows. The gold contract, what do we have with gold? Okay, so this is gonna get intriguing coming into two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, folks, the Fed will give a statement. Inside that statement, the market's gonna be looking for how aggressive is the Fed gonna be with short term rates. They expect to go up 25 basis points tomorrow, that's one quarter point. Bottom line, how aggressive are they gonna be going forward and are they gonna do anything with their balance sheet? The Fed at the beginning of the year, folks, told the market that they, what they would like to do is that they would like to go up on short-term rates three times this year. This would be the second time. So they definitely have six more months they could do uh, another rate hike. You know, bottom line, if that's all they're going to do, that would be non-aggressive. Um, that's how, I, I suspect that's how the market's looking at it because what you have, we have six months left in a whole year. If you're only going to go up one more time, it's like, okay. And the... Let's go over to the, uh, well, first, let's, let's look at gold. So what gold did out here today, he traded to 1260, closed at 1268.90, had volume of 169,000 contracts. This was coming into a monster contract day, was coming into strength. Uh, you're talking about coming into 272,000. Rejected, lower price, this thing wants to go topside. And the way this is looking to me is that it's not only going to, get into the $1,300, which was the swing high from April 17th, I expect we're gonna break it. When we, when we went up a week ago Friday, we hit 1298.80, and we hit that with 258,000 contracts. When you push in to swing highs like that with contract volume, your probability is much higher, you're gonna break it. That being said, that's one side of the trade. The other side of the trade is confirming that today, and what that is, is that the, this market the metal market, it pulled back into its strength, it had lighter volume, it rejected price. So it did both what it should have done, meaning you have a nice sign of strength, you back down at light volume, you reject lower price, you move forward once again. And what is that all about? Just go over to King Dollar. King Dollar folks, get the peanut butter, get the jelly, bottom line, down 146 ticks, it wants lower price. It looks like it wants 95 to 94. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Dow Industrials closed up 92. NASDAQ up 44. S&P's up 11 and a half. We're going to be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow finished up uh, 92 s and s and is up 11, NASDAQ up 44. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Andy Heck, as we do each Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, right here at TFNN, Andy's got a great program every Tuesday and Thursday. Now, you can get this right on your cell phone, no matter where you're listening right now, whether you're listening in your car radio, you're in the East Coast, West Coast, in the middle of the country. Bottom line, remember, you can go 24 hours a day, right on your browser, on your cell phone, you go to tfnn.com, you hit Tiger TV on the right-hand side, you're gonna get some great HD quality video as well as audio, and Andy's also got a couple of great newsletters. You can come over to our website, at TFNN, and as you uh, get to the front of TFNN, what you're gonna do is that you're gonna go into newsletters. As you go into newsletters, you are gonna see the Technomental Commodity Report. You can test drive that. 30 days absolutely free. Andy's got a new newsletter, The Daily Essentials. You can test drive that. Also, 30 days absolutely free. Andy Heck, what's going on? Hey, how are you? Well, it looks like uh, gold saved itself. Silver, I like what silver did too. I want to see silver really move, but they were, they were ready to jump off the cliff, I think, particularly yeah, silver. I, I, you know, gold Gold is, listen, gold's $35, $36 from the highs, and uh, silver's the one that's on the track, came down a dollar, but there's a lot of room in this trading range, Tom, 1606 to 1874, and oh, no, it's no, taken I, I advantage agree. of no, no, it. I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy what they did. That's the bottom line, yeah. especially I, coming I into I the Fed. I don't see anything bad. I really don't see anything bad. Platinum still continues to be a yeah. dog. Platinum. Don't. What the heck is wrong with platinum, man? Well, I mean, Tom, I'm getting excited about platinum. I'm telling you, $66 premium to palladium is the lowest since 2001. Really? Yeah. It's not going to be long before oh, industry listen, I love says. Platinum. I, I, I have platinum, but I, it's like, oh my God, it's like, this is just wild, man. Yeah. I know. Well, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, the, the, the best trades take the longest. And oh, the yeah, most listen, it's, it's, it's not that I'm not. It's, I'm not that I'm trading it. I just I like I like platinum. Period. I like the coins. So I like platinum yeah, too. Right, right. I like it very much. But right. listen, we're we're seeing we're seeing a real divergence here. Platinum gold at three hundred forty dollar discount, but platinum palladium at a sixty six dollar premium. Man, two thousand and one. You got to go all the way back to two thousand and one. The last time the 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 uh, the spread was was this this tight. That's crazy, man. 
Wow. Yeah, I mean, and, and Tom, for a lot of time, Platinum was trading at a $1,000 uh, premium oh, to Oh, I owned it. I know. I Listen, That's man, I, I owned a lot of Platinum. I, I mean, I, I know. It's, it's, you know, it's like amazing, actually. Yeah. 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 So. All right. So let's talk about crude oil. Okay. Because I know everyone's interested in that sucker. Oh, that's right. And, and we're going to get that uh, API at. Uh, we are at 4:30. Yeah. Good. Uh, okay. Uh, that should come out. We'll, we'll we'll see what we'll see what the API is telling us. Yeah. But uh, we we seem to have stabilized here around 46 and a half bucks. Uh, around that level we'll see uh i still think 50 bucks is a sweet spot there's so many reasons uh if we come crashing down a lot of these u.s shale producers in oklahoma and the permian basin they'll just close down for for temporarily and they'll buy back their shorts make lots of money and then we'll import oil that our oil needs uh from abroad at cheaper prices and if the price goes up they'll hedge so I kind of think, and I also think that this situation in Qatar is very interesting for oil. So let's look at the bullish and the bearish case. On the bearish side, you know, you could have OPEC fall apart over this thing. You know, you basically took the uh, the mediator uh, who was Qatar between the Saudis and the Iranians out of the equation okay. here. The Russians kind of took over for them last year when they came to this uh, agreement to cut production. But Qatar, you know, the, the, the Saudis and, and their allies, Bahrain, the UAE and various Yemen, various others, they've blockaded Qatar. Uh, on on air, on sea, and on land now. So, because they want them to uh, stop their terrorist funding, this is what they say, and uh, various other, they don't want them close to Iran. That's, that's the bottom line there. Uh, and uh, I, I think this is kind of tough love that they're trying to give Qatar. They probably just go, pushed them closer to Iran. <laughs> right, well, exactly. This could go one of two ways. Number one, Qatar could come back into the fold, production cuts continue, so on well, and so Qatar, forth. I mean, Qatar is a big gas thing. All those people yeah. need gas, man. I mean, that, yes. that, that, yes. they supply gas no to Europe, right? Yeah, but they, yes, but they also, uh, Qatar needs food, and that's a big deal because they get all, a lot of their food from the Saudis. So it, it's, a, it's a tough situation there. So, so what I'm saying is, on the one hand, it could break this whole OPEC thing apart even more than it is, widen the rift. You know, the product, they could abandon their production cuts, start flooding the market with crude oil. But... You know, if the rift widens, the, the, the potential for violence in the region uh, uh, increases. And you have a very, you know, Qatar is very strategically located in the Persian Gulf there by, uh, by the exit to the Persian Gulf. And uh, you could have problems with violence, with uh, logistical routes, with refining, with production facilities. You know, as, as Iran, we know, wants to uh, uh, flex their muscles in the region and uh, have more influence. So... This is not necessarily bearish. It's not necessarily bullish. You've got to see how it plays out. So I'm expecting more volatility in crude oil. And we could get a sudden spike down. We could get a sudden spike up, depending upon the way this Qatari thing plays out. But it, right now, it's really not that clear. So, well, you know. Well, I, I guess, you know, I can understand, you know, you're saying the food and all that. But there's only like 2 million people there. Like, no, that's, 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 that's less than Boston. <laughs> yes, it's also the richest nation yeah. per capita. So they're, they're gonna they're gonna have whatever they want. I think it's. I mean, do you, you know what I'm saying? It's like okay, yeah, you know, they are, yeah. they are. But but the rift widens between. Uh, remember, in the region, when the Saudis and the Iranians were getting really uh, upset with each other, it's always been Qatar that stepped in between and smoothed things over. So that's over now, for the time being. So the potential for violence could be higher on a political basis. So that's why I think crude oil can, you know, we could see bigger daily ranges in crude oil uh, in the in the weeks and months yeah, ahead. Yeah, that'd be Depending. a pull, well, uh, you, you, what you're saying is that there'd be some kind of political premium in that, right? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, yes, right. and I haven't seen it yet in the price of we Brent. We haven't seen it in a long time, right. No, right. I'm with you, we right. Haven't seen, we haven't seen it since the Arab Spring. But it's easy to get five bucks in that, folks, <laughs> as, as a premium, there's no doubt, oh, right. Oh, yeah, right. very easy to do that. I mean, all you need is one problem in either the Straits of Oman, the Persian Gulf, and boom, boom, Brent is going to a big premium to West Texas. You know, so very interesting there. Uh, expecting uh, 
um, um, volatility there on the industrial side of the commodities. A very confusing picture. Lumber has come back up. Copper is down today on incre on you know just just uh, this thing is trading between 260 under 260 and 265. Can come down to the bottom end of the trading range here. But lumber is up about 370 from 340. Um, iron ore continues to move lower. I mean this is this thing is flirting with 50 bucks a ton now. And uh, the Baltic Dry Index is a little bit higher today. So you're getting a lot of confusing, confusing signals uh, in the industrial uh, uh, complex right now. And the dollar, hey, Tom, the dollar continues to sit there and just languish near the lows. I think this thing just is desperately waiting for a reason to try 9570. And two, maybe they'll get it tomorrow. Two o'clock tomorrow. Two o'clock yeah. tomorrow. That's it. Yeah, I know. Right. But, you know. Right. You know, I mean, the Fed, listen, 25 basis point increase baked into the price. Right. Stay right there, Andy. Sure. Uh, sure. Our phone number, folks, is 877-927-6648. Give us a call. Andy and I are coming right back. Dow Industrials finished up 92. NASDAQ up 44. S&P's up 11. Gold's trading 1268. Silver's at 1681. Platinum's at 926. We're going to be right back, folks. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. This this segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're talking with our man, Mr. Andy Heck. We are talking markets. We're talking commodities. And, of course, don't forget, folks, Andy's got a great show here every Tuesday, Thursday, 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time. And if you haven't uh, test drove uh, the TFNN network, folks, uh, with your cell phone, just uh, go to tfnn.com in the browser, hit Tiger TV, and you're going to get some great HD quality video as well as audio. So, 
Um, yeah, they, with the Fed at 2 o'clock, the dollar looks like it wants to tank. Bonds are still yeah. going higher. We are at 2.2 yeah. 2 in the 10-year. And the housing index broke out today. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, the, 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 de the devil is in the details tomorrow. It's that statement yeah. that uh, is going to come from them. That's going to, you know, I, by the way, if they shock the market, the shocker to the market would be no interest rate hike. Oh, my uh, I God. Think, you know, gold yeah. would be 13 and a quarter. Like and silver would be, yeah. you know, not 20 bucks. Right. But I, I don't think that's no, going to happen. Either. I don't do that. Right. I think you're going to get the devil in the details. If they say they're going to go again in September, you know, maybe we get a sell off in precious metals if they sound very dovish which i think they're likely to after that uh recent uh, employment report you know I, I think you know if they say oh we're going to be very gradual we're not sure any more interest rate hikes this year then you could see um uh you know the market move the, the oh, price if they don't, if they, i mean they started out the year with three so this will be the second one then they have another right. six months to do one so i think that even if they just do that Gold and silver is going to be all right because right. I it, think so too. Yeah. Watch the vote tomorrow. See how many dissenters you are going to have. At least one dissenter. I think Kashkari will dissent and uh, against raising it. I don't think it'll be unanimous tomorrow. Yeah. He well, he was the only one last time too. Right. Yeah. That, that's yeah. that's the bottom yeah. line. So, so we'll it will be interesting. Uh, was he the only one last time? I think the first. I think the first. I, I'm not sure. He. Yeah, I'm Cash not sure. Kashkari doesn't think interest rates should go up. At right, all. right. Yeah. Oh, I know that. Now, he's, what's he's interesting, a, interesting about that uh, okay. is that that's, so he's the Minneapolis Fed folks, and, yeah. and the guys that he did take the place of, he didn't think it also. So that could be right. just that section of the country, too. You know, like yes. that's intriguing. Yeah, that's, you know that's what I mean? That's where they're seeing economic, they're not seeing economic growth. Right, right. Right, right. So let's uh, let's take a quick look at natural gas. You know, okay. I write I write each week for Seeking Alpha about natural gas, and I got some. I get you know I wrote an article that was kind of bearish uh, for the price, and I got some really nasty comments. I mean, there's a you know which kind of makes me more bearish because it tells me there's some angry longs in this market right now. Oh, that's heavy uh, in the in the in the gas yeah. market, folks, because the yes. gas market can take your pot. Oh, it's and, so ugly. You know, you never want to get personal with stocks ever or commodities or anything. And well, when that I'd happens, rather get personal that's scary. with stocks than commodities because commodities take no prisoners. Right. And when you're looking at commodities, natural gas is the worst of all of them. Natural gas. So check this out. This is an ABC the down, piece. man. It broke the yeah, B point with volume. And this is a big one. So your, and, A's, and your A is 346. Your B, oh, man. You're talking about 50 cents. Yeah. Three, uh, two fifty two twenty. Yeah. Is, is what I'm looking for. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. man. And I think we could get it quick. You know, I, I <laughs> you know, basically what you got is you got natural gas. It put up a low at two ninety three fifty. And right now we're trading at two ninety six. We try to get over three last week. We failed again. You know, you're going to you only can fail too many so many times before this thing, you know, takes that's, you apart. That's so. Intense. So this Thursday. We're expecting between an 80 and 85 BCF increase uh, injection into inventories. Okay. So last week we got 106. We come in at around the, you know, the, the 90, the 95 level. Ooh, watch out. Yeah. I think you get an ugly move here. So, you know, it, it just it just looks terribly weak to me. And I, it looks ter terribly weak to me fundamentally because you are getting 62 BCF on average as of last week for the rest of injection season get your new record high in inventories. So we're going to go well stocked into next win winter season. Wow. That's so, that's you know what you've explained to us is that it's amazing how long the injection is. That's a long injection. Oh, man. it's a 6 month injection season and a 6 month withdrawal season. Right, right. You know. That's, so that's, I don't have uh, the numbers yet, but it looks like WTI uh, erases daily gain after release of stock uh, uh API uh yeah data i gotta find this data okay. yeah yeah i mean the, 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 i was expecting an increase in inventories because last week uh there was some divergence between the api and eia numbers the if you remember api said they were down like four million barrels and the eia came out with an increase of three i know million which crushed the price but so it'll be interesting to see what the eia says tomorrow i always i don't put as much stock in the api as i do in the eia figures yeah, no, I can, I can see that because they were yeah. way off last week. They were man. way off last week. They were right. They were on on gasoline and distillates. Yeah, but they they were way off on the on the crude. So we'll see what you know. We'll see what that tells us. But I still think, hey, 
Could crude oil go down to $42? Absolutely. No question about it. But I do think it'll go back to 50. I think, you know, there's too much vested interest in this market. And this market is a controlled market in many ways. Okay, this so here, here we go. I got it for you. Okay, okay so you here we go. Let's see what we got here. We have uh, crude inventories gained 2.75 million barrels last week. Uh, okay. that's gasoline. Sent, that's uh, ga Cushing gasoline plus 1.79 million barrels. Distillates okay. minus minus one point five four five million. And Cushing. Wow, that's, a, that's a good draw in distillates. Interesting. Yeah. That you know, let, let's break that down for you a little bit. Um, the distillates are really a great reflection of economic activity because the dis distillates, you know, the heating oil is kind of a really good proxy for diesel and jet fuel. And, you know, when you're getting draws in the distillates uh, in this off season, that's kind of good news because that means that uh, more products are coming to market. And so I view that as kind of a little bit of a positive. Okay. Uh, I thought that uh, the API would be reporting a, a an increase of about 4 million barrels this week to make up for last. So I don't view that as overly bearish. The gasoline increase is just that the refineries are working overtime because the kids are off for school and people are getting in their cars and driving. So you want to stock up in gasoline. And, you know, all refineries are, are pumping heavy uh, gasoline at this time of the year. So that's not... Uh, but that doesn't come as a big surprise. But overall, listen, the tone of the market's bearish right now. Uh, it's searching for a bottom. Uh, keep your eyes on those crack spreads, folks, because that will be the first sign that uh, crude oil will find a bottom at some point. Yeah, so this is interesting. So they're saying, let's see, we're, it looks like we're right below 46 again. And that's where it took off from this morning. Interesting. Yeah. So, no, uh, not a surprise. And then I'll go to sleep and wait for EIA tomorrow. And uh, we'll see what they have in store. I mean, there's been divergence. I'd say about five of the last 10 weeks, they've gone in other directions on crude stocks, which is very interesting. Yeah. So now, of course, you know, up in Boston, Boston, I, it's probably not hotter than where you are right now, but it's hotter than Florida. <laughs> so Hey, I, I got to tell you something. Yesterday, yeah. it was 72 degrees here. So listen, that, it, it was beautiful it's here crazy. too. Wow. So, crazy. so in Boston right now, it's 90 and humid. And if it's 90 in Boston and humid, folks, that's when you can't breathe in Boston because 90 yeah. in Boston is like a wet 90. <laughs> 100. You know what the, the forecast is for Saturday here? What? 112. Oh, my God. <laughs> or 12. That's why uh, my wife and I, we're, we're, we're right after the show on Thursday, we're, 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 heading, we're heading out of town. We're going to California where it's going to be 80 degrees. I love it. So, 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 hey, so that, that's what I want to talk about, the Midwest, though. What's going to happen with the what, – what do we have uh, going on with between wheat, soybeans, corn? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. We – Oh, I guess we'll come back from the break. Yeah, cool. <laughs> you stay right there. Indy and I are coming right back, folks. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Uh, you stay right there. Indy and I are going to come right back, and we're going to be talking some uh, weather Hello. and maybe some weather markets. We'll see, man. Right back, folks. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. 
While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We're talking to our man, Mr. Andy Heck. We're talking markets. We're talking commodities. Uh, don't forget, folks, now tomorrow, 2 o'clock, uh, this was the first day of the Fed meeting. Tomorrow is the second day. They're going to have a statement out at 2, which are going to affect uh, markets, of course, uh, particularly. Uh, commodities, notes, bonds, and currencies. Uh, no question about yeah, it. Yeah, big time, man. Yeah. So, so last Friday, the um, the uh, USDA put out their World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates report, and uh, they tight. You know, the prices have not really moved much. Uh, the soybean report was slightly bearish because of the big Brazilian harvest, so prices came off a little bit. Okay. But they're still ha ha hanging above lows. Uh, corn was the most positive because the the um, the, the agency cut the uh, ending crop and stock numbers. So we, you know, we we've been doing okay in corn and corn prices. You know. Today, closing around the 380 per bushel level. Yeah. The wheat was the most bearish, but uh, of course that recovered like crazy today. Because the bottom line, Tom, is the USDA in this June report, they don't know what the weather's going to be over the next three months, yeah. and that's all that matters. Yeah, that's the big number, isn't it? And you right? know what? In Minnesota and some areas this weekend, you had snow, hail. <laughs> Do you know in the Sierra Nevadas, uh, up in California, okay. 10 inches of snow two days ago. Oh, they're going to heavenly mountain. They're going to love that, right? That's yeah. Oh, yeah. So, hey, this, this, this wheat deal, this, this wheat looks pretty good out here. Interesting. Yeah, the wheat, the wheat looks good to me. It's looked good to me for a while, but, uh, you know, hey, Mother Nature's going to have to, going to do something to really get it to go. You know that. <laughs> now, how long, it's all how long, so we're, we're June 13th now, right? So, yeah, I, well, we'll start in the middle of July, month from now. We'll start to have a clue. In okay. August, we'll have a lot better clue. In September, we'll know for sure. That's I, how it goes. That's you how know? it goes, huh? Yeah. So yeah, it's that. Much. It's that. That. So the harvest is that late. Interesting. Okay. Well, the harvest, the har end of August, they're different for all three crops. Yeah. Uh, uh, wheat, wheat is first. Uh, I think corn is second. Beans are third. Uh, no, I, I actually, I think it's the other way around. Uh, beans is second. Corn is third. But. Um, you know, we'll have a good, we'll have a good, by the end of July, we'll have a good uh, read on, on what's going on, whether we're going to have a drought or anything like that. It's going to affect uh, crop yields. Yeah. So, you know, and, and Peter from Park City is saying snow there today, you know, and it was really windy. It was very cold here in Vegas. I mean, the weather's a little crazy. Wow. So, I, I, you know, I wouldn't discount yeah, because, the chance of something. Yeah, because, or oh, any kind of a snow, 
it can't snow on those plants now, man. They can do it in the no. winter, but now no. it would just kill them, no, right? No, no, yeah. no, no, kill them. That, that would close. kill them. Yeah. That would be a killer. And right. you know, a snowstorm in the Sierra Nevadas, this time in June, in the middle of June, that's not, that's not normal. It's not normal. I saw some people wearing, you know, I was, I love, I love, when I live on the West, living on the West Coast, there's one good thing about it is when the, uh, you know, when baseball is out here yeah. for night games for local, my, my Yankees or your Red Sox, you know, we, we finally get a night game because we very rarely get night games. So I got to watch the Yankee game last night. I looked a little chilly in California. Interesting. They're wearing That's... some jackets. Okay. I watched, by the way, just switching the topic for a minute. Have you seen this kid, Aaron Judge? No. On the Yankees? No. Take a look at He's 25 years old. He's 6'7", 285 pounds. He's leading the league in every category. Oh, I got to watch. 22 home runs. He's the huge. The kid is a monster. Wow. Oh, my God. So the oh bat must He's... look so small in his hands, oh right? Oh, my God. He was standing next to the first baseman last night. <laughs> the first baseman looked uh, like a dwarf next to him. It was uh, He's unbelievable talent. And, you know, he could be rookie of the year and the uh, MVP and triple crown winner. Oh. Now, watch this guy. This guy is something else. No, I will. I will. I, it, I, it, it always blows my mind when you get these big dudes. And, you know, baseball is so hard to hit a baseball anyway. But and then the bat looks so small in the hand and they just. You know, what, you know what's scary to me when these kids come up these days? I used to say, oh, they're younger than me. Now I say they're younger than my children. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. Hey, you just got to start counting backwards, man. I'm telling you. That's right. No, I know that. I know that. <laughs> I've been using that for a couple of years. I'm, I'm with you on now. I'm, I'm definitely with, uh, right, right alongside you. Hey, so, so uh, barbecue, cattle. Where, where are we at with this cattle? Well, cattle today, today the cattle came off a little bit, but the pork, I guess people have a taste for the ribs this year because the pork continues to move higher. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, cattle is stabilized here, kind of in the middle of the trading range. Uh, still, you know, about a dollar twenty a pound uh, in grilling season. Um, yeah, looks so like it's going to remain around here. No, but the you. hogs, I can see the hogs. Are, 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 you know, they're sitting at the top. They are, but I can see both of them. Both of them actually look like they want to be a little lower. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, right? Because it's like they do. I mean, that would make total sense here, Tom. Yeah. But you know, the meat markets very rarely make total sense. Yeah, you start, you start, you know, you, you, we come up to the, the the beginning of it, right, which is Memorial yeah. Day, and all of a sudden, yeah. before you know it, we're a, a third of the way through June. We'll be in July 4th before you know it, and then you're down right. the other side of the curve, man. Right, right. But the grills are going to be fired, uh, June, you know, for the rest of June, July, oh, yeah. August, and into yeah. September. So, you know, you still got a lot of demand going there. So, uh, you know, I, I, I would say you'll probably, late August, you'll start to see some real slippage in those markets. Remember what they did last October. Oh, my God. They got, they got crucified. But, uh, you know, right now, still big demand season, and the supermarkets want to keep the prices up that's for sure yeah now i want to switch gears and you go over to copper for a second because you know sure. the, the you know copper i mean it actually looks pretty good man i mean well i i agree i agree but the problem with copper is it's never come back down and tested that level that it broke higher from and that's okay but it is trapped in this like 258 to 265 level just trading back and forth and copper could sit in a range for a very long period of time very long period of time. So I'm not seeing anything special here. You know, we, we get up to two. So if you watch the LME stocks, they've been dropping, which is supportive. So I didn't see what they did today, but I would assume that they went up today because copper got, you know, got clocked uh, over the last two sessions, uh, falling from 265 last Friday down to 259.70 today. Um, I, I like copper, but, you know, again, copper depends on infrastructure building. And if you think that the president's not going to get that through, you know, that could be difficult. Between that and China, that's that's where copper's fortunes lie. Yeah, well, China's the big one. I mean, we, we're nothing China's compared the, to that, right? That's, you know, China's the big one. Yeah, yeah but there's, there's a psychological angle to it a little bit on, on infrastructure building. But China's the big one, and Moody's downgraded China, and, uh, you know, I... I tend to think cop is going to go up. I like the way the weekly chart looks. It looks a little bit like a head and shoulders to me. Let me see if I could put well, that. And also, you know, I mean, we broke when we broke a few days ago, folks, last week. You know, we went from 254 to 261. That's a break with conviction. That's saying that copper yeah. can go to 284, man, which would be. Yeah, yeah. But, it, you know, but here we are. We got up to 265. We're back down to 259.70. So, you know. 
kind of it's like I said, Coppa can stay in a range for a long time. It's just oh, yeah. the nature of the beast. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and I'm not and, seeing I'm not seeing any kind of really dramatics from the other base metals. Right. And iron ore worries me at fifty two dollars a ton. Yeah. Iron ore worries me. I mean, that sucker was ninety. We're down to fifty two. It was ninety in February, and it's fifty two now. So that's a big move, and that you know that's really the the bottom line. It's all China about steel. Indicated. Yep, exactly. Yeah, steel. It's all steel about is, steel. No steel doubt. Steel is key. So, you know, we'll see. I, commodities right now very interesting. I think like the be, the 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 last big thing uh, before the summer season, before July Fourth, is this Fed meeting tomorrow. And then we got and it. then we got a world that's on fire. So Two o'clock tomorrow, folks. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Okay, man. You have a Thanks, great Tom. one. Safe one. Save that voice for another ten minutes. Thank you, sir. Okay. You stay right there, folks. Uh, I'm going to be coming right back. And, of course, Andy's going to be coming up with you at 5 o'clock. Don't forget, right on your cell phone, TFNN.com. Hit Tiger TV. We're going to be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. Join Andy Hecht as he shows you how to make money in commodities. The Commodities Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's go uh, take a look at uh, where we stand out here. So if we go inside the bond market first, what you're seeing is this, folks, is that the 10-year, the 30-year have continued to reject lower price, came into their strength from the 2nd of June. That's where the bond market took off topside, took out its swing points, confirmed an ABC structure on the way up. That's when we went from 126.04 to 126.25 inside the 10-year. Today, we back down to the 126.06, rejected it. Bottom line, you're coming into the 2 o'clock announcement tomorrow. 
and we'll see where this shakes out. But technically, that is set up to go much higher because the correlation is pretty intense, meaning that you go topside on the 10-year and we go topside with 1.5 million contracts. We backed into that today with 866,000. You rejected price. You had 2.2. Now, if it was only bonds, your probability wouldn't be as high that the Fed would not be as ag aggressive. But what you have is this. You had the gold market do the same type of setup, and it's actually the same day also, the June 2nd day. Uh, that low of that day was 1261. We came to 1260. We did 1.7, no, we did 171,000 contracts. That was going against 272,000. You rejected lower price, had light of volume, that wants higher price. And then on top of that, you go right over to the dollar index. And these three vehicles here, dollar index couldn't handle, the dollar index is amazing. It just can't handle price, period. The dollar index has been a one-way trade since January 3rd when it made its high. Um, normally, you can get a counter trend bounce that, you know, you can get a good bounce going. In this particular case, the dollar couldn't bounce past the downdraft from the 18th of May. And that is where we had 46,000 contracts traded. We got up to that uh, on the 30th. You did 27,000 contracts, gave it up in spades, and then we got up to it last week with 20. 5,000, no, 29,000 contracts, gave it up again. Now, what that is saying is that that's saying it's building cause for lower price, and what's sticking out like a sore thumb right now is the election night. That's where we were. We, at first, what we did is we went down to 95, 905 before we took off to 103. So it looks to me that uh, where we're sitting right now is that we're at 96, 975. That would be saying that when the Fed comes out with this announcement tomorrow, that it would be less aggressive on the rate structure. And of course, the actual bond market itself, meaning the physical bond market, where you can buy bonds that right now are saying the same thing. Uh, when we take a look at the aspect of where we are the last six months, this is the lowest we've been in the last six months. The actual low is 2.14. We're at 2.2. Uh, when we take a look at the full year, we're right in the middle. The, the low, is high, it's pretty amazing, actually. The low for the year, if we go back to the last 12 months now, this is not a calendar year, go back to the last 12 months, the low is 1.358, the high was 2.626. So what you can expect out here tomorrow, uh, it looks like the S&P wants to go hit a, uh, test the high. Uh, NASDAQ, NDX100, they need help big time. I suspect uh, they're off their highs. They come off their highs, monster volume. We had a counter trend bounce today, light volume. More than likely, we get a large ABC structure on the way down, and we'll see how it uh, straightens out inside the S&P. Uh, Dow Industrials closed at highs. That means that can get higher. Um, the, the, the SPY, uh, we're right below the high, so I expect that's going to get tested in the morning. And that's 245.01. Right now, you're at 244.55. You stay right there, folks. I'm man, Mr. Andy Hicks. Going to be coming up next, growling and prowling with you. And always remember, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Everything you need is right inside you. Go grab it and have a blast with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Stay right there. Andy's coming right up. Go get him, folks. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. 
For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN.